Hello, good morning. Welcome to our prayers this Tuesday. It's um, good to be with you. So I'm using the daily prayer app from the Church of England. Um, just a reminder that we are on the 7th of November already. So um, time is, is rattling on. It's looking like a nice day today, actually. So, um, yes, not bad for the time of year. Bit of sun, bit of rain, but it is November in the Northern Hemisphere. Let's keep a moment's quiet and then um, we'll begin our prayers. O oh Lord, open our lips, and thy mouth shall proclaim your praise. Blessed are you, Sovereign God, Ruler and Judge of all. To you be praise and glory for ever. In the darkness of this age that is passing away, may the light of your presence, which the saints enjoy, surround our steps as we journey on <coughs> may we reflect your glory this day and so be made ready to see your face in the heavenly city where night shall be no more blessed be God Father Son and Holy Spirit and blessed be God forever We've been looking at um, a series on the Psalms in our evening services at St Thomas's and then this Sunday we were looking at Psalm 42 and Psalm 43. I'm going to share from Psalm 42 this morning. As the deer longs for the water brooks, so longs my soul for you, O God. My soul is a thirst for God even for the living God. When shall I come before the presence of God? My tears have been my bread day and night, while all day long they say to me, Where is now your God? Now, when I think on these things, I pour out my soul, how I went with the multitude and led the procession to the house of God with the voice of praise and thanksgiving among those who kept holy day. Why are you so full of heaviness, O my soul, and why are you so disquieted within me? O put your trust in God, for I will yet give him thanks, who is the help of my countenance and my God. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be for ever. Amen. I'm also going to share from Psalm 147. Hallelujah, how good it is to make music for our God. How joyful to honour him with praise. The Lord builds up Jerusalem and gathers the outcast of Israel. He heals the brokenhearted and binds up all their wounds. He counts the number of the stars and calls them all by their names. Great is our Lord and mighty in power. <coughs> His wisdom is beyond all telling. The Lord lifts up the poor, but casts down the wicked to the ground. Sing to the Lord with thanksgiving. Make music to our God upon the lyre. Who covers the heavens with clouds and prepares rain for the earth? Who makes grass to grow upon the mountains and green plants to serve our needs? He gives the beasts their food and the young ravens when they cry. He takes no pleasure in the power of a horse, no delight in human strength. But the Lord delights in those who fear him, who put their trust in his steadfast love. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be for ever. Amen.
before we have just a moment of um, reflection I'm going to read a passage from Isaiah chapter 1 beginning at verse 21 and then going to the end how the faithful city has become a whore she that was full of justice righteousness lodged in her but now murderers your silver has become dross your wine is mixed with water your princes are rebels and companions of thieves everyone loves a bribe and runs after gifts they do not defend the orphan and the widow's cause does not come before them therefore says the sovereign the Lord of hosts the mighty one of Israel ah I will pour out my wrath on my enemies and avenge myself on my foes I will turn my hand against you I will smell to where your dross as with lie I remove all your alloy and I will restore your judges as at the first and your counsellors as at the beginning afterwards you shall be called the city of righteousness the faithful city Zion shall be redeemed by justice and those in her who repent by righteousness but rebels and sinners shall be destroyed together and those who forsake the Lord shall be consumed for you shall be ashamed of the oaks in which you delighted and you shall blush for the gardens that you have chosen for you shall be like an oak whose leaf withers and like a garden without water the strong shall become like tinder and their work like a spark they and their work shall burn together with no one to quench them this is the word of the Lord thanks be to God there's one more reading which um, I was debating whether I should bring it today but it's a set reading and it's from Matthew's Gospel chapter 2 um, and it, it, in a way it seems peculiar that this reading is, is set at this time of year but it's the account of the visit of the Magi um, you know why now because we'll be hearing about this you know um, in, in a few weeks it's a scary thought when we approach Christmas or after Christmas in, in, in the season of um, Epiphany in the time of King Herod after Jesus was born in Bethlehem of Judea wise men from the east came to Jerusalem asking where is the child who has been born King of the Jews for we observed his star at its rising and have come to pay him homage when King Herod heard this he was frightened and all Jerusalem with him and calling together all the chief priests and scribes of the people he inquired of them where the Messiah was to be born they told him in Bethlehem of Judea for so it has been written by the prophet and you Bethlehem in the land of Judah are by no means least among the rulers of Judah for from you shall come a ruler who is to shepherd my people Israel then Herod secretly called for the wise men and learned from them the exact time when the star had appeared then he sent them to Bethlehem saying go search and diligently look for the child and when you have found him bring me word so that I may go and pay him homage when they had heard the king they set out and there ahead of them went the star that they had seen at its rising until it stopped over the place where the child was when they saw that the star had stopped <coughs> they were overwhelmed with joy <coughs> on entering the house they saw the child <coughs> with Mary his mother and they knelt down and paid him homage and opening their treasures they offered him gifts of gold frankincense and myrrh <coughs> and having been warned in a dream not to return to Herod they left for their own country by another road now after they had left an angel of the Lord appeared to Joseph in a dream and said get up 
Take the child and his mother and flee to Egypt. And remain there until I tell you. For Herod is about to search for the child to destroy him. Then Joseph got up, took the child and his mother by night, and went to Egypt. And remained there until the death of Herod. This was to fulfil what had been spoken by the Lord through the prophet. Out of Egypt they have called my son. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Lord, we do ask your grant us understanding of your word this day. In Jesus' name. Amen. Passage from Psalm 42. The person is thirsting for God, longing for God. Passage in Isaiah. The people of God are behaving not like the people of God. In fact, they're behaving worse than pagans and people who don't believe in God. And so God is warning them of judgments. However, in the midst of judgment, he talks about the time of um, bringing them back and restoration. And then we, we have a, massive, um, a passage in Matthew's Gospel, which tells us about the Magi, who behave more like the people of God than the people of God. In as much as they are the first people in Matthew's Gospel who actually bade, um, bow down and pay homage to Jesus. And it's fascinating that these people who were most likely not Jewish, who were most likely pagans, who were most likely astrologers, not just astronomers, who spiritually are a long way from what the Bible says is, is, is acceptable behaviour and conduct in terms of not turning away from God to um, seek fortune tellers or astrologers or anything to do with, with um, divina divination or magic or anything like that. And yet these are the people that God speaks to and these are the people who follow the star. And these are the people who bow down and worship Jesus. By contrast, the city of Jerusalem is in uproar because Herod, who's only um, half Jewish, not very well liked, not very popular, is panicking because news of another king has come to him. And he was a megalomaniac, he was mad for power and paranoid. And so we will have the account, um, the horrible account of the slaughter of the infants. And yet, at the end of Matthew's Gospel, which is the most Jewish of the Gospels in terms of the, um, the, the, the amount of references to the Old Testament and, and things within it that Jewish people would, would, would relate to in, the, in this Gospel, it's the foreigners who bow down to Jesus at the beginning and at the end of the gospel, Jesus sends the disciples out into the whole world to start in Jerusalem and Judea, but then to go to the whole world. And so, other words, so in other words, what God is saying is this. What makes us acceptable to him is, are our hearts open to him today? Not just because we're called Christian, not just because we're called people who follow Jesus, but do have, we have hearts which are open to God? Because that's the most important thing. Jesus will say elsewhere in um, John chapter 4 when he speaks to a Samaritan woman, somebody else who was an outcast by tradition. He said to her, the Father is looking for worshippers who will worship him in spirit and in truth. Whatever the we do today wherever we go today let us be those who genuinely pursue God in spirit and in truth let's pray in our prayers today we remember Willibrod who was um, an evangelist in the Saxon period he went across to Frisia, which is just to the north of where Holland is. God the Saviour of all, you sent your bishop Willibrod from this land to proclaim the good news to many peoples and confirm them in their faith. Help us also to witness to your steadfast love by word and deed, 
so that your church may increase and grow strong in holiness through jesus christ your son our lord who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the holy spirit one god now and forever amen we pray today lord that we will be those who pursue you with all of our hearts that we will see your world as you see your world that we would have hearts of flesh and not hearts of stone and that we would be enabled to respond to your call upon our lives this day just as you brought the magi from distant lands may you speak into our lives this day we pray for your world praying for the peace of jerusalem and praying for peace in the holy land at this time where things are being done which don't look holy we pray for israel we pray for the people of gaza we pray for your peace we pray for your kingdom to come and we pray that people would acknowledge jesus the messiah we pray for your peace in ukraine that there will be an end to violence and conflict and that lord your kingdom would reign in that place we pray for our town of blackpool that you lord would bless this town and that there will be a season where people turn to you and that Blackpool will be known as the place where people come to faith and live for you. We pray this day for those who will use the services of Comfort Cafe and for those who will provide. And we pray for ourselves that Lord we will be active in your service this day. For we ask these prayers through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. We join together in the traditional version of the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. Well, God willing, I'll see you next Tuesday as we finish. May Christ, who has opened the kingdom of heaven, bring us to reign with him in glory. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. Amen. See you soon, folks. God bless.